guys, Turbocharged51 over here, along with my friend, Super Booster. Guys, it is basically, I'm not sure when the video is going to be out, but I will. I guarantee you guys it will be out before the race on Sunday. Welcome back to the Motorsport Lounge. It's literally been, I think, a year since I've done a Motorsport Lounge episode. Um, the last one I did was after Vettel left Ferrari, and we were like, where's Vettel going to go, and who's going to replace him? But um, guys, this is officially the 2021 F1 season predictions for the Constructors and Drivers' Championships. And um, after pre-season testing, I think we're in for a cracker of a season. Oh, yes. There's, from pre-season pre testing, there's a lot of questions and none of them are answered. <laughs> <laughs> True. So I think it's the best time to do the reactions after pre-season testing before the, the racing calendar starts. It's an interesting calendar and um, I think it's going to be a good one, guys. So we're going to dive into the Constructors' Championships first and um, then after that we'll do the Drivers' Championships. So... Super Boosted 23, can you please announce who we think is going to do the worst in the Constructors' Championships? We're going from 10th to 1st. Who is going to do the worst in the 2021 F1 season? At 10th place, I don't want to say last place because that's, that sounds sad. <laughs> 10th place, it will be Haas. Okay, guys, we have both, like, we have taken each other's predictions and we've, like, mashed it together. But we both have agreed that we think Haas F1 will be last. I know it sounds bad, but I think we think they're going to be 10th in this year's Constructors' Championships. Because Haas have already said they're, they're much more focused on next year with the, the regulation change. And my reason being for Haas, my reason for Haas going to be in 10th for the Constructors, first of all, they're not going to be doing a lot of development this year on the car. And no matter how you look at it, they've got two rookie drivers. They've lost both. Well, not lost, but they've... Yeah, they've lost, basically. They've lost both... both experience. Yeah, both experienced drivers in Roman Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen. And now they have got Nikita Mazepin <laughs> and Mick Schumacher in the car. So that lack of experience, as well as the, the minimal development they're going to be doing this year, is my reason for them being in 10th. What's yours, Super Boosted? For me, it's... Okay, I've set aside my personal taste and everything. I just looked, if you go with preseason alone, they, the, the horse, I'm so sorry, the horse, <laughs> they, they looks better, but they didn't like sort of bring enough for me. They, and they didn't wow anything. Well, except for the paint job, it looks way better, but <laughs> it's just a, uh, Unexperienced from the drivers, they are good drivers, but no, they still got a lot to learn. The comparing to everyone else, they they are totally rookies. Mm. Because of the rookies, they won't bring out the max of the car. Also true, yeah. It's just that uh, Haas are on the back foot, and that's the the long and the short about it. Um, but that's our reasons. Now heading in towards ninth and eighth place. Now we're going to talk about both because we had a little bit of a disagreement about this, but I actually heard Super Boosted's point of view about this. Now, guys, my original prediction was Alfa Romeo in P9 and Williams in P10. But after listening to Super Boosted, we've made the, the pre-season prediction decision of putting Williams in P9 for the constructors and Alfa Romeo in P8. Now, one thing that I do agree with Super Boosted is, he said that Alfa Romeo have just got an overall better combination of the car and the drivers. If you look at Kimi and Giovinazzi, I still believe Giovinazzi is one of the most underrated drivers on the grid. You can at me with that comment. But Kimi and Gio, when they show up, they show up. Looking at the combination of Russell and Latifi, yes, Russell it has been on it ever since 2020, but I still think Latifi is going to be dragging the team down a bit. And that is what I agree with on Super Boosted's point of view. So, I don't think, you know, it's uh, Williams P9 and Alfa Romeo P10. I th uh, Alfa Romeo P10. Williams P9 and Alfa Romeo P8. I think that's a safe bet to go with. Yeah, I think that's, that's better because as much as I wish Williams doing better, I think just with the overall experience and the performance of Romeo, of Romeo had last year, the, they have a bigger chance. And with pre-season season testing, they got a more powerful engine this this year. 
done also last true year, last year and they have um, added some downforce stuff to the front wings and yeah, the Alfa Romeo looks completely new from the front end designed. The Williams looks a lot like the same of last year, um, except for the barge boards area. But I still think, I really still think that Alfa Romeo and Williams, it's going to be a close battle. It Don't get that close. wrong. Very but it's close. basically, in my opinion, going to be Alfa Romeo versus Russell. It's not going to be Alfa Romeo versus Williams. And I think that's going to give Alfa Romeo the edge when it comes to Williams. Um, so... I think that's going to be the main thing. And um, with all of that being said and done, Boosted, please announce P7 in the Constructors' Championship for our prediction. P7. Because it's a brand new team. It's Aston Martin. Now, before you guys lose it, yes, I know, it's basically a Mercedes. I know that even though Aston Martin can say all they want, that they've designed a whole new car and blah, 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 we know that's still a Mercedes underneath. The, re <laughs> the reason we've gone for Aston Martin and P7 is because we still... I Vettel admitted it after preseason testing. He's still getting used to the car. And even though Lance Stroll had a very, very good 2020, especially the start of the season, I don't think... They're gonna, I don't season. think they're going to start good. I think their season end is going to be fantastic. Um, like Perez ended the season last year with the, the when they were still racing point, now being Aston Martin. I think they're going to finish the season very strong. But I think they're going to start on the back foot like Haas. I think they, they, they're still just too much new things to get acclimatized to. And that's why we went for Aston Martin P7. Stroll and Vettel, it's a good combo. But can Stroll sort out his... His, his, his full season concentration, if I can put it that way, and how quickly can Vettel adapt to the car? Yes, I think um, yeah, it's important to remember that both of them have to get used to the cars, and I just feel like because because they are sort of not really copying catching uh, Mercedes anymore. And uh, with Mercedes also having problems in pre-season testing, um, it just for me, Aston Martin can move up if they if they get used to the car. Hmm. If Vettel can push the limits. Yeah, and the thing is, guys, this is pre-season predictions. We we're gonna rewatch this video at the end of the season and see how close we came. But this is just how we feel now. We can feel different about the third round of the season. Oh, yes. It's because we we. Preseason testing, it basically they're trying to pull the wool over our eyes. You don't know what's really going on. Everybody's sandbagging. So it's going to be interesting to see where everybody places. But that's the long and the short about Aston Martin. And here, basically, in P6 in the Constructors, one of my favorite teams, we've put Alpha Tauri in P6 with the combination of Gasly and Sonoda. Guys, basically, the only thing is that the front end of that car is basically a Red Bull. Oh, the, they've taken the front suspension, the basically the whole front nose, and a lot of the main monocoque has been helped by the designers at Red Bull. So Alpha Tari said it themselves, they kept the very stable rear end they had last season, they didn't change much, made it a little bit more stable, yeah. and they just took the Red Bull front end. And I mean, they used, I think they used both their preseason, to well, their, their development tokens to do that. But I don't know about you, that second sector in Bahrain, the S section before you go to the hairpin, that you come out of the, uh, the fourth corner, the right hand, and then there's a left, right S. Oh, yeah. Of all the cars on the grid, the Alpha Tauri to me looked the smoothest, the smoothest through those two corners. Yeah, that that S section, the Alpha Tauri was planted. If you look at the onboard lap on the F1 YouTube channel where they compared Verstappen and Sonoda's fast laps on the final day of preseason testing, Sonoda was quicker through there than Verstappen. And I really think that is an underrated package. Even though we both feel they showed a bit too much of their cards in pre-season testing. Yeah, they're low, low fuel cards. Yeah, true. They're low fuel running. They showed too much of their cards. But still, I think Alpha Tauri are going to come out of the blocks punching as hard as they can. Oh. And I think they just, even though Aston Martin's going to get better at the end of the season, I think they're going to maintain P6 in the constructors. Uh, I think Alpha Tauri, they, they were, for me, they were the best team in pre-season season testing. Oh, most definitely. Um, Red Bull, very close, but you, 
expect Red Bull to do good because they are a top team. Mm. After it just came out of blocks. It's the B spec Red Bull team, so you always expect them to be either back markers or at the back of the midfield. Yeah, and they came out swing like mm. crazy dogs. No, it's that for me they are very good and I think Sonoda can learn very much. And Sonoda not not to say he's slow. If you look at his career, he is a very good player. Mm. Right, we can't talk about this forever. Let's move on into the top five of the country ships. And um, yeah, this is what we're going for. In P5, super boosted, you can go ahead. It's going to be Al Alpine. <laughs> Alpine, <laughs> Alpine. 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 Guys, whatever it is, I believe it's Alpine, no matter what it is. Alpine. The former Renault Formula Alpine. 1 team, now known as Alpine. And, um, guys, the reason we haven't put them higher, I know everybody's like, but Alonso's there. Guys, the main thing for me is, I think Worth Ocon... Alonso yeah, guys, I'm Alonso guy. crazy. I mean, if you guys didn't watch the previous Motorsport Lounge episodes, go check them out. Check them out in the playlists. Um, I'll even leave a link in the description down below. I'm an Alonso fanboy, but I think Ocon's going to hold the team back. With all due respect to Esteban, we're not going to reveal any of the Drivers' Championship standings yet. But I feel Ocon's going to hold the team back. Yeah, and I think this is with the Alpine. Uh, it will be in case of how good they can get get it started because with Alonso, you know, he you will be able to push the car hard, mm. and Ocon can also push the car. He is fast. Yeah, the no he doubt. Had a podium last year. Yeah, as well as in back in 2018, he was on he was battling Perez every single weekend in the racing point. So I, I he is quick, but I don't think with the with at all the the midfield is very tight. Mm. Yeah, guys, look basically from P7 to P3 in the constructors championships, it can be any of the teams we're mentioning now. Yeah. This is just what we currently think, and I think Alonso is going to do a spectacular in the drivers championships because the Alpine is quick. Yeah, There's no doubt quick. about it; it's quick. The question is, can it be quick at every track? That's the big question. And if no. Ocon, if Ocon shows up this season, well done for him. But Alonso, remember what Alonso did to Van Dorn back at McLaren. And if Ocon, if he does the same to Ocon, I don't think Ocon is going to get out of that just like Van Dorn couldn't. Ocon needs to make sure from Bahrain this weekend, when F1 starting, from Bahrain he needs to at least match Alonso. That's my opinion. I don't think he will completely match him because if you go look how stable and planted Alonso made this Alpine look in pre-season testing, he made it look like he made the car look like it was on rails. He made it look like a top team, but mm. with pre-season testing being sandbagging galore, <laughs> it, it's just a big unknown for how much he yeah, how much the car is capable of. And um, guys, look, I I, don't, I I like Ocon, I really do, but it's gonna be about. If Alpine wants to get high on the constructors, he's going to have to support Fernando. And that's the long and the short. Now, oh, I can't believe. Fourth place, we've put Ferrari. Yes. Now, we know last year was... A, we're not even going to talk about last year. I can't. Terrible, last year yeah. was just sad. But, guys, it's clear that, the, that Ferrari have improved their power unit, most definitely. And I think the combination of the two young drivers already experienced experienced young and hungry young drivers in the form of Leclerc and Sainz the Ferrari is really going to be a force to be reckoned with but it comes down to the same thing as as Alpine is the car going to be quick at every track or is it going to vary from track to track yeah. like I, and I, I obviously you know it's not going to be the same every track but if there's a big difference track to track they're going to struggle it they depends how small they can keep that differ that 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 differ that's the main thing for me but Sainz and Leclerc in the same team? I'm excited. That's going to be good. I'm excited. But for me, I hope Ferrari, because the big thing with, with last, last year was they didn't have power. Mm -mm, nothing so at all. The thing is, I hope I didn't do a Jimmy Clarkson and it just went power. 
and forgot about researching the uh, the weaker parts that were clearly shown last mm. year. Uh, with the low power, now you last year they ch- you saw mm. the car couldn't turn. Even. Look, if you look at the front of the Ferrari, the front nose cone, especially like the the nose cone of the front wing, has been heavily redesigned. It's got like these little in cuts and everything to it. Ferrari, basically, Ferrari and Haas are the only two teams that still have this 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 very wide front nose, yeah. but that's Ferrari's recipe. That's been Ferrari's recipe for how many years now, and I really think they have put effort into the the aerodynamics of the car, but obviously they know the main problem was the engine. It's clear that has that was taken up most of their time, but we're talking about Ferrari, the team that has been the longest in the sport. They yeah. will not neglect other parts of the car, in my opinion, but I still think the combination of the two young, hungry drivers in Leclerc and Sainz, it's going to be it's going to be a lethal combination if the cars if the cars switched on that weekend and both the drivers are switched on. Ferrari are going to be fighting for very good points. We're sitting with Leclerc and Sainz. Right. And I think it's going to be a good season. I yeah. think the chemistry between those two drivers, I think they're going to click really quick. I mean, Charles is a nice guy. Sainz is a nice guy. We saw the bromance between Norris and Sainz. And Charles had a fantastic relationship with Vettel. So I think it's going to be a good season for them. And now, Super Boosted, announce P3 and the Constructors. I think P3 is going to be McLaren. Who else, guys? I mean, McLaren this year... To me, they were the, they didn't look the best in testing. We said that about Alpha Tari, but they looked the most consistent. Mm-hmm. With with Ricardo and Norris at the wheel, especially Ricardo. Guys, I'm not a Ricardo fan, but Danny Rick is quick. And that rhymes. <laughs> Danny yeah, Rick is quick. <laughs> Ricardo is a quick driver. And you can never discount that Australian. And now with McLaren already having this very fancy rear diffuser, already adapting towards the brand new Mercedes engine in the back of that car, I think it's going to be a damn quick car. That, that car is going to be very big. And I mean, even Toto Wolf of Mercedes said, except Red Bull, they are worried mostly about McLaren. And that speaks volumes coming from the, the, the big head at Mercedes. And I think if Red Bull and Mercedes, because obviously that's the only two teams left, if Red Bull and Mercedes mess up, McLaren are, is my choice for being the next race winners or being there for podiums. Yes, definitely, because if you, if you go and look how much effort they put in this year's car for adapting, like, well, bending the rules with the diffuser, and and they having a Mercedes engine mm. more power than they had last year, and M- McLaren already has a good chassis in everything you can handle that power. So now it has that power. I I really the only thing I I think is left to say is that's going to be a quick car, and when Norris and Ricardo show up, I think at s- certain tracks. Mercedes and Red Bull are going to have a problem if they if they are caught napping, yeah, without they, a doubt. If if they don't take McLaren seriously, they they're gonna get their butts kicked. Yeah, true. But now, guys, moving into number one and two. Now we couldn't make a defined decision about this, and you guys will understand why when we finally start talking about the drivers' champions. We couldn't choose who was going to be first in the constructors between Red Bull and Mercedes, and. Main reasons are, Red Bull looked so good in preseason testing, Very and Mercedes good. were all over the show. To give you guys a quick example, ever since 2014, when the V6 Turbo Hybrid era started, Mercedes have been the team almost every single year putting up the most amount of laps. And the years that they didn't put up the most amount of laps, it was Ferrari, but they were always second or first with preseason testing distance. This year, they were the team that did the least amount of laps and the least amount of running. And that is also why we had a little bit of a gripe with Aston Martin in P7, because Aston Martin and Mercedes had the same problem with the power units, which was the gearbox, not speaking to the ECU. That's the well, what they came up with. And I think Aston Martin had a turbo leak issue. Turbo leak as well, but I know the issue with Vettel that day he didn't run, I think he did six laps of running, was also the gearbox. Yeah. So, Mercedes are on the back foot no matter how you look at it. But the thing is, I said 
Red Bull P2, Mercedes are going to win the Constructors. Super Boosted said, Mercedes P2, Red Bull win the Constructors. But basically, it's going to depend on where does Bottas and Perez place. We both, we, everybody knows, Verstappen and Hamilton are the two main guys to beat. They're going to be up there the whole time. It's going to be about who does better between Perez and Bottas to see who's going to seal first and second in the Constructors. That's just how I see it. That's how we see it. Yeah, if you, if you think about it, because why I put Mercedes second is because I don't think um, if they're gonna, it's Mercedes, they're gonna recover from the bad preseason testing. But I feel Rebel are gonna catch them napping and get the bigger jump they really need mm. in the start of the year because Rebel always end it yeah very good but they are totally nowhere in the start of the year yeah they always start slow and end almost as the best car yeah last year they were the best car yeah at the end of the season and yes i know everybody's going to type in the comments now but it's because mercedes slacked off for the season we get that but red bull always show up too late if they can hit the ground running this year while mercedes are still on the back foot we've got a good championship fight on our hands and you guys are going to see when we're headed to the drivers' championships. It's <laughs> it's going to be a good season. We, that's all we can tell you. But um, that's been the constructors' championship predictions. So to run it qu through it quickly for one final time, as we actually me and me and Superboosters are looking at a Mercedes on screen, but you guys are going to look at some very sexy pictures. Constructors' championships from P10 down to P1, so from last to best. Haas F1 and P10, P9 Williams. P8, Alfa Romeo, P7, Aston Martin, P6, Alfa Tauri, P5, Alpine, P4, Scuderia Ferrari, P3, McLaren, and it's going to be a gamble between P2 and P1, between Red Bull Racing and Mercedes. Before we go, F1 really went to ace. It's four teams that start with an A. <laughs> True! <laughs> Alfa Romeo, Aston Martin, Alpine and Alpha, wait, wait, wait. As Alpha Romeo, Aston Martin, Alpha Tari, Alpine. I did not realize that. Well spotted this super boosted. Jeez. A boys. <laughs> A class. A tier. <laughs>